My friend Hal Freeman is a retired professor and lives with his family in a small city south of St. Petersburg in Russia called Luga. While there, he started a blog called uh, Between Two Worlds, where he chronicles his adventures and experiences as an American living in a small city in Russia. In this summer, the summer of 2018, Hal and his family returned to the States uh, on vacation, and I had the opportunity to catch up with them and to conduct this interview with Hal. So I think you'll find it quite interesting. I hope you enjoy this episode from my interview with Hal Freeman. Well, there are certainly challenges to it, the language, and some things that I've already mentioned. I would say, overall, the thing that I would like to make clear is <clears throat> neither I nor any member of my family have ever been treated in a way that was rude. Uh, the, most people in that small town learn that I'm an American, and they know that. I have never, and I, I walk, that's my physical, spiritual, emotional time, uh, I walk for about an hour and a half, four or five times a week around town. And uh, so I meet people, they see me, many of them know who I am. I have never once been spoken to in an unkind way. I've never had anyone that I suspected was talking about me, uh, you know, in the distance or whatever. I have always been, been treated with respect. And if anything, if they talk to me, they're interested. They want to ask me questions. Why are you here? Uh, things like that. And, and what is it really like in America? And uh, cab drivers, they love to pick my brain uh, <clears throat> to find out some things. And uh, I would say the same thing about my children. I mentioned them in school, um, high school, elementary school. Neither one of the boys ever was made... In, ever was made fun of or was was treated in any way uh, that was that suggested it was because he was American they didn't fit in. They have never been made to feel they've had their of course their boys and they're in school and they have squabbles and whatnot with other students from time to time. But it's never been over nationality. So I would say if anything, if if I've had any kind of different response it is an extra amount of kindness and even the director at the school where I go and volunteer and teach and he said I was his hero because I moved from the warm climate of South Carolina to the to Russia and uh, so they're very understanding very kind and don't listen to those who say you will be mistreated if you go to Russia there are always evil people in every culture but I can say over the period that I've been there, over the years I've been there, never once treated in an unkind or disrespectful way. Uh, Russia has gone through a very difficult time since the 1980s and 90s. Demographically, the population was decreasing. Life expectancy was very short. And there's been a move toward being more family-oriented as a culture. So whereas we sensed antagonism in America, in Russia, things are geared toward family life, uh, toward what is good for children, what is good for families with children. Uh, and so that has been a very positive experience. Uh, we were very concerned about our children. Uh, Roman, our, my stepson, was uh, 16 years old. He had lived in Russia. He was born in Russia, but he had been out of Russia since the time he was eight years old. And Gabriel was seven, almost eight. He had never been to Russia, didn't know any Russian language at all. Uh, and then, of course, we had a little Marina who wasn't even two years old at the time. And um, so we were concerned about them. Actually, they adjusted very well. Uh, Roman went to high school. He fit in. He studied hard. Uh, Gabriel is our extrovert, and he did not let his lack of Russian stop him. And we found in Russia the teachers worked very close with parents. 
And the children don't stay as long at school. They go in about a little after 8. Uh, Gabriel was home by 12.30, 1.30 if he had P.E. And, uh, of course, there's a lot of homework. But the teacher worked very closely with him and with us, especially Oksana, since Oksana is completely bilingual. And by the time Gabriel started his second year, after class has begun, she said, Gabriel has no trouble communicating or understanding. And he is, after two years there, bi- uh, he is bilingual. Uh, he speaks Russian just as comfortably as he does English and Roman, Roman as well. So I'm the one lagging behind. It, my Russian is not quite as developed as theirs is. And so, the, the, but the whole atmosphere of but what, how can we help your family? How can we help your children adjust? And, uh, that has been a positive, and I would have to add medical care. Uh, we were concerned because when we were in Russia before, the medical care was not the quality, near the quality it was in America. Coming back to Russia, that had completely changed. The clinic we go to, that we take our children to, and that we go to, uh, the pediatricians, the specialists who work, I have a little problem with the degeneration, a little bit of degeneration in my neck. They have a, what they call a manual therapist on staff who's a medical doctor who specializes in that. I meet with him once a week. Um, the cost without insurance for a non-citizen, I pay 500 rubles per visit. And that's about, last time it was exchanged at $7.94. And that's the going rate for an office visit. And the doctors spend however long it takes to find out what the problem is. So our children had the snip, they have the colds of childhood. And um, pediatrician came to our home when our little girl got sick. That was $16. So that. You can compare that with uh, the American system. So I think this, the values, the attitude of the culture, it wants to be one that where the traditional family is regarded as very valuable to our society. And we want to do Russia, to me, the way I have experienced it, as a father of three children there and having my own concerns as an American it's very, um, it's much calmer than here as far as there's not the division. Uh, there, there's, there is, we need to work together to rebuild and build our country, which I think they're doing, and it's, it's very good for the family. And that's the best thing about it as far as I'm concerned. Hi again. Hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with Hal Freeman. Please subscribe below to get notified when new episodes become available, which happens every week. And if you would, please leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of this video. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.